In this lecture, we're going to discuss an important device known as a solenoid. Now, a solenoid looks something like a slinky. It consists of a long and continuous conducting wire, which is made up of many loops, which are packed very closely with respect to one another. So let's look at the following diagram. So we have our very long continuous conducting wire, which essentially forms many loops of wire, which are packed very closely with respect to one another. Now, if we allow an electric current to flow through our wire, it will produce a magnetic field. So that implies that a solenoid, which consists of a long continuous wire, also produces a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is described by the following magnetic field lines shown in blue. Now, for a solenoid in which it consists of coils that are packed very closely with respect to one another, the magnetic field inside our solenoid is approximately uniform. That is, the magnetic field lines are parallel with respect to one another inside our solenoid. Now notice in the regions right outside our solenoid, in these regions, our magnetic field can be approximated to be zero. Now what exactly is the equation that gives us the magnitude of our magnetic field inside a very long closely packed solenoid as described in this diagram? So. Let's begin by taking a cross section of the following solenoid and we get the following region. So we essentially slice our solenoid and we get the following diagram. So in the following top portion, we see that our electric current is coming out of the board and that's given by the following dots. Now in the bottom region, our electric current is going into the board and that's described by the orange axis. So essentially, our electric current travels in the following direction along our solenoid. So to calculate the magnetic field inside our solenoid, we must apply Ampere's law. And to apply Ampere's law, we have to choose a symmetrical closed pathway. So let's suppose we want to choose the following square pathway. So we begin at point A, move to point B to point C to point D, and back to point A. And the length of one edge of our square is given by L. So we choose a closed pathway A, B, C, D, A, which is essentially a square. So we apply Ampere's law law and recall that Ampere's law states that the closed integral of the dot product of the magnetic field and in our infinitely small segment DL is equal to the product of mu naught multiplied by the enclosed electric current inside this chosen surface. Now by the definition of the dot product, recall the dot product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of those two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta between these two angles. So this will become important in just a moment. So let's begin by evaluating the, le the left side of our equation. So the closed integral of the dot product of BDL is equal to, so we essentially first integrate from A to B, we get the following result. Next, we integrate from B to C, we get the second term. Next, we integrate from C to D, we get the third term. And finally, we integrate from D to A, and we get the following fourth term. So let's begin by examining term number one. Notice, in this region, our magnetic field is assumed to be zero. So that means B is zero and this entire term becomes zero.
Now let's examine term number two and term number four. So in both of these regions, notice that our vector dl points at an angle of 90 degrees with respect to our magnetic field. And that means because the angle between the vector b and dl is z or is 90, that implies that cosine of 90 is zero. So these terms go to zero as well. So we see that the closed integral of the vector the pro or the dot product of BDL is simply equal to this single term. So the integral from C to D of the dot product of BDL. Now the angle when we go from C to D between our magnetic field B and our DL is zero because they are parallel with respect to one another. So that implies that the dot product BDL is equal to BDL multiplied by cosine of zero, which is simply one. So we are left with the following result. Now, if we integrate and evaluate the integral, we get this result where L is simply our distance from C to D. So, we see that the left side of our equation of Ampere's law is simply equal to the product of B, the magnetic field, what we're looking for, multiplied by L, this distance from C to D. Now, let's move on to the right side of our equation and let's calculate what the enclosed electric current is in this closed region. Now, if the electric current I in the wire of the solenoid is given by I, then the enclosed electric current is given by n multiplied by i, where n is the number of loops in the following chosen region. So in other words, our enclosed electric current i enclosed in this region is given by taking n, the number of loops in this enclosed region, and multiplying that by the electric current in our solenoid. So n is the number of loops inside our path. So we see from Ampere's law that this is equal to this since our left side is equal to BL. This becomes BL and the right side becomes mu naught multiplied by the enclosed I so n multiplied by I. So if we take this equation, rearrange it and solve for B, we see that the magnetic field B inside our uh, solenoid is equal to mu naught multiplied by n divided by L multiplied by I, where I is our electric current inside the solenoid. Now, it is very common that we represent n divided by L as lowercase n. So lowercase n is simply the number of loops per unit length. So this equation gives us our magnetic field within a solenoid that is assumed to be very long, in fact infinitely long, and in which the loops of wire are assumed to be packed very closely together.